All right, uh, tonight I'm gonna talk about diabetes, at least my understanding of it. And that is that diabetes is a insulin resistance disease. And basically an analogy of in insulin resistance is we are intaking, we are ingesting a chronic supply of carbohydrates. Imagine you're fueling your car, your body is a car and you're fueling it with carbohydrates. That's your energy source, primary energy source. Uh, it's not flex fuel yet. <laughs> that would be fat, right? So you're fueling your, your car, um, your car with carbohydrates. And what happens is, is that as long as you continue to fuel your body with mostly carbohydrates, what happens is, is that your cells use that energy and, and insulin always goes up as it's a hormone that always goes up when you ingest a, a bunch of carbohydrates, sugar or whatever. Okay. And what its job is, is to open the door. Essentially, if you imagine like a door on each cell opens and it just opens to let the excess glucose in the blood um, into the cells to be used for energy. It'll it just, that's all it's there to, well, I mean, insulin does a lot of other things, but primarily in, in, in regards to diabetes, it's there to, to open those doors. And the problem is, is, is that most of the cells in the body are already full of glucose. So the resistance is the cells saying, you open the door to let this glucose in, but we're full. We're at max capacity here in this cell <laughs> of glucose. And um, we're gonna shut the door. And that's the resistance. There's, it's resisting the insulin, opening the door to let that glucose in and shutting it. And the problem with that is, is that over time, the excess glucose in the blood and the uh, chronic high levels of insulin is, is literally toxic to all the organs of the body. And uh, you hear horror stories about people with diabetes, you know, losing their legs and all kinds of other bad shit that happens as a result of diabetes. You know, heart disease, strokes, um, it's just, it's, it's nasty, it's not fun. And it can all be alleviated essentially by lowering our carbohydrate intake, right? Either that and or exercising more. Because when we exercise, if you think of the cell as like uh, the battery of your phone, the, the glucose is let's say the energy, right? And if we're fueling our body with carbs still, right? Um, the cell is full of energy, right? And if we don't exercise, we're not gonna drain that, that battery down, right? And so the cell's always gonna stay full and the blood is always gonna stay full of um, glucose, the bad thing. So the idea is less carbohydrate intake. So there's less blood glucose, right? Number one, and then and then more exercise, however you can get it in, to lower some of the glucose, deplete some of the energy in the cells, right? So that there's more room for, you know, a, a carb hit in the future. Because insulin is always gonna be opening those doors so that the glucose can make it into the cell, right? To refuel the cells for it with energy. And so, essentially, to reduce that blood sugar, we really, truly need to reduce our carbohydrate intake. Most of us in America and in the world are chronically intaking too much carbohydrate. Um, it's not, it's really not natural because unless you're eating a lot of uh, fruit in your diet, um, in nature, you wouldn't be getting so much uh, glucose. Um, you'd be mostly getting fat 
and protein from the animal that you just ate. So, and then this kind of leads into the ketogenic or really the low carb diet, ketogenic being like the extreme form um, to really truly get your body adapted to burning fat for fuel. So if you remember what I said about, you know, filling your car, your body vehicle up with carbohydrates, instead, the only way you can really get to um, filling it up with fat um, for energy is you need to basically stop ingesting the um, carbohydrates. And when you stop ingesting carbohydrates or you in stop ingesting it on such a high level, um, what ends up happening is, is that insulin starts lowering because there's less glucose in the blood to dump into the cells. So when the insulin goes down, the, the locks, if you wanna call it locks, the locks preventing your, your fat stores from being used, like for energy, the locks come off. So if you were overweight, that fat now is available to be used for energy in the, in, in the body, in the cells, essentially. And until you, until you do that, <laughs> um, you, you wouldn't lose weight. So as long as, as long as you have a chronically high intake of carbohydrates, your insulin levels are gonna be high, your fat stores are gonna be locked, and you can never burn the fat for fuel because it's being stored for a rainy day. You are in a luxury environment where you can eat carbs all the time, and so your body's like, oh, I guess, I guess, uh, you know, if you're gonna keep eating this, this cush form of energy, um, I can start storing away some of this carbohydrate as fat and, and put a lock on that so that, you know what, we're gonna save that for a rainy day because we're in a cush time right now. We're in, we're in a good time. We're not in deprivation where we're starving ourselves or we're hungry, right? So while, we're, while we have all this f excess food, let's store as much of it a, a, as we can away as fat for a rainy day. And that's what your body is gonna continue to do. So long as you continue to eat the majority of your macronutrient as carbohydrates, that's exactly what your, your body is going to do. Especially if you don't, um, I guess, regardless of whether you burn it off or not. You, if you keep ingesting, if you, regardless of whether you exercise and burn it off, your body is going to keep storing it away for a rainy day, as long as you keep eating an excess amount of carbs. So the low carb diet is essentially um, dropping, lowering your carbohydrate intake. So your insulin, insulin, insulin levels come down, your locks come off your fat stores, you can start burning fat for energy. Um, you, you end up eating more fat and less carbohydrates. And uh, fat, as it turns out, can be converted to or glucose for energy as well as protein um, can be converted to glucose for energy for that short burst of energy um, uh, from like a fast run or whatever um, but it's the it's the fat energy that sustains you longer if you were good to go on a long um, I don't know marathon essentially those people have been exercising so much that they've burnt off the two days or so stores of glycogen um, glucose stored in the cells and so they are the majority of them are likely fat adapted meaning they're using they're filling their their vehicle their body with fat essentially they're eating mostly fat and their body is running more efficient because of it you know insulin levels are down from the lower uh, carb intake the uh, blood glucose is down obviously because uh, they're burning more of the uh, glucose in the exercise that they do and they're eating less of it so the blood glucose is down and everything is hunky and dory um, and uh, that's diabetes in a nutshell and essentially how you would overcome it um, in a good way. I mean, there are healthy fats. We don't need to be afraid of them. 
Um, we do not need to be afraid of fat, no longer. Cholesterol is one of the most essential um, things that our body needs to function normally. And so uh, we cannot be afraid of fat. Uh, if you want to look into that more, uh, studies have, have proven that uh, cholesterol is, is needed. And um, it's not something to be afraid of. So there are a lot of people on this low carb diet and even this diet was used uh, in the early 20th century, early 1900s um, to treat diabetes um, before insulin was invented. Um, so they would literally have people on a ketogenic diet back then um, and it was working to treat diabetes so and today of course if you look it up ketogenic diet is proven to work to uh, reverse at least type 2 diabetes and uh, they're even calling uh, um, Alzheimer's disease type 3 diabetes so um, that might tell you something you have any family members that are suffering from uh, uh, dementia or uh, Alzheimer's uh, it might be something to look into as to maybe go on a, at least a low carb diet um, and if need be to truly get fat adapted and lower that insulin and blood glucose uh, a keto, keto uh, ketogenic diet so Anyway, I uh, hope that helps. Um, no, I, I've been wanting to make this video for a while and uh, um, definitely hope this helps uh, people understand what diabetes is really about. If I miss something, add it in the comments. Maybe I'll do a, a follow-up video uh, some other time. Anyway, I love you all. Bye for now.